Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is again a quick recap, anatomy recap uh, in embryology. Uh, so for the detailed sessions, please go and watch my channel. Uh, so I won't be telling in detail, I will be just brushing through the uh, topics. So today uh, I have for you placenta. So let's begin. So placenta has got a chorionic plate and a basal plate. Chorionic plate we discussed from the fetal side whereas basal plate we talk about from the maternal side. So chorionic plate when we discuss from the fetus to mother that is this is the fetal region you can see the umbilical cord from the fetus to mother the layers which you encounter are first the primary mesoderm with umbilical blood vessels. Primary mesoderm is the first formed mesoderm that is the extra embryonic mesoderm then you have the cytotrophoblast followed by the syncytiotrophoblast the next plate is known as basal plate basal plate is facing the mother so from mother to fetus that that is how you get the layers so first you have the decidua basalis with the maternal blood vessels that is mainly stratum spongiosum and compactum then you have the syncytiotrophoblast layer out that is uh, the outer layer which you call it as nitabox layer. Then you have the cytotrophoblast layer, the outer shell, then followed by the syncytiotrophoblast inner layer. So these are the layers of the basal plate. Now, if you are given a diagram like this, I've done a detailed session. Please do watch the detailed session first, then come for the quick recap. So uh, identify the regions colored as A, B, C, which is decidua basalis, which, which is decidua capsularis, and which is decidua parietalis in order. So A is decidua basalis, the part which is attached to the endometrium. Then C is decidua capsularis, the remaining part, the ebembryonic pole, the covering. Then uh, B is the remaining endometrial wall, that is decidua parietalis. Now uh, chorionic villi, we know it is from the chorionic villi, uh, we, uh, we have the placenta fully developed, isn't it? So you have the primary villi, secondary villi, tertiary villi. So primary villi is just the cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast. If you get the primary mesoderm as the core of this uh, primary villi, you call it a secondary villi. And if this primary mesoderm is invaded by the fetal blood vessels, you call it as tertiary villi. Now by the end of fourth week, we have the maternal fetal exchange established. So this is a diagrammatic representation. This is primary chorionic villus where you get the cytotrophoblast in the core. Then secondary villus where you get the mesoderm and the tertiary villus where you get the fetal blood vessels. So this is cytotrophoblastic core, mesodermal core and fetal blood vessel core. Now when we discuss about uh, circulation of placenta, there are mainly uh, 80 to 100 spiral arteries and the intervillous space is roughly estimated to be 140 ml. So uh, per minute about 500 ml of maternal blood circulates through the intervillous space. So we can uh, say uh, the blood is exchanged roughly about four times in a minute. Now let's see the umbilical cord. Uh, we know the umbilical cord is mainly made up of Wharton's jelly which is rich in hyaluronic acid. This is the primitive umbilical ring uh, through which the contents of the abdominal cavity protrude out. Uh, so the primitive umbilical ring will transmit the umbilical cord. Uh, then you have the white line duct with white line vessels, uh, the allantois. So uh, when we discuss about the umbilical cord, we can see uh, mainly the umbilical blood vessels when the child is born. At times these remnants can also be seen. So let's discuss about the contents. These are the umbilical vessels, allantois, the white line duct. So uh, first we will discuss about the main content which is always there. They are the umbilical arteries and umbilical vein. When we talk about umbilical arteries, they are derived from the ventral division of the internal iliac artery. And uh, once the function is over, the proximal part, part of the umbilical artery is seen as superior vesical artery and the distal part degenerates forming the medial umbilical ligament. Now coming to the umbilical vein, there are only there is only one vein. There are there were two veins, but later uh, the right regresses, and we have only the left umbilical vein which persists. It actually joins with the left branch of portal vein, uh, and its remnant is seen as ligamentum teres hepatis. Now talking about the vitellointestinal duct, it is the duct which connects the midgut with the yolk sac. 
and if it persists you call it as Meckel's diverticulum. Now allantois, I have done a detailed session place to watch. So the allantois, we, uh, during the intrauterine period, the remnant you call it as uracus and after birth you call uh, the allantoic diverticulum remnant as the median umbilical ligament. You should remember the spelling, it is median, it is not medial. Now uh, the proximal part of the same will be attached to the uh, apex of the urinary bladder. Now, uh, when we talk about placental membrane or placental barrier, up to third month, you will be having four layers for this barrier, where, which will later convert it into two layers as the placenta gets matured. So, up to third month, we have four layers from outer to inner. You have the syncytial trophoblast, you have the cytotrophoblast, you have the mesoderm and finally, you have the endothelium of the fetal capillaries. So, these are the four layers up to third month. So this is incision, cytotrophoblast, the mesoderm and the endothelium. Now these layers are reduced to two layers where you call it as vasculosyncytial membrane. From the word itself you have the vascular component that is the endothelium of the fetal capillary and the syncytium means the syncytial trophoblast. So outer syncytial trophoblast and inner endothelium of the fetal capillaries. These are the two layers which you get as the placenta mature. So as the uh, layers are getting thinned out, there will be better exchange of nutrients. Now, uh, there are mainly two zones in the villi. It is said that one is called alpha zone, the other one is beta zone. Alpha zone is mainly membranous and that is the region where the exchange occur. Whereas beta zone that is non-membranous and it is meant for hormonal synthesis. And uh, here actually uh, cytotrophoblast and the stroma persist. Uh, human placenta is said to be hemochorial. Now talking about fetal membranes, uh, I have seen one of the questions where uh, which are the fetal membranes except. So in that case you should know which are the components which come under fetal membrane. They are the decidua parietalis, decidua capsularis, chorion leaf and amnion or you can simply say uh, the bag which you, the bag of membranes which you see when you inspect the vagina as the baby is coming out before rupturing. So that bag is made up of, that bag of membrane is made up of decidua parietalis, capsularis, chorion leaf and amnion. Then uh, you should know which are the agents which cross the placental barrier. Again this can be asked as MCQs. Uh, so progestins, uh, they cross the placental barrier. That is the reason why uh, if a female fetus is masculinized. Then diethyl stilbestirol, DEC, that is a synthetic estrogen. If it crosses the placental barrier, it will cause abnormalities of the uterus, vagina and cervix, sometimes clear cell carcinoma uh, if uh, it is a female fetus, then testicular abnormalities in male fetus. Now the viruses which cross placenta are rubella, cytomegalovirus, coxsackie, varicella, variola, measles, polio. And uh, if mother is a cocaine or heroin edit, uh, then it will also uh, enter into the fetus through the placental barrier. Then uh, steroid hormones, thyroxine, all these can and cross the placental barrier. Then identify the clinical condition. Uh, this is a fetus, we can see that the fetus is fully edematous. So which is the condition? Hydrops vitalis, fetus papericius, Down syndrome, none of the above. We know this condition is known as hydrops fetalis. So hydrops vitalis or erythroblastosis fetalis, this is actually an antibody response by mother's immune system. Uh, when the fetal blood vessels, uh, sorry, the fetal blood cells reach the maternal circulation by crossing the placental barrier. Normally what happens is the fetal blood cells won't cross the placental barrier. If it happens, uh, there will be an antibody response by the mother's immune system that is called isoimmunization. So as a result what happens is the fetal red blood cells will be hemolyzed. So if the fetal red blood cells are hemolyzed, there will be more production of erythroblast. So as a result there will be erythroblastosis, increased erythroblast. And uh, fetal uh, there will be edema and effusion into the body cavities which will result in fetal hydrops. The severity is actually increased with the antigens from CDE group, blood group uh, compared to the ABO blood group. 
So to prevent this condition, RH immunoglobulins should be administered after the delivery of the first child. That is, if the mother is RH negative and the first child is RH positive, soon after the delivery, uh, you should administer RH immunoglobulins. Now, amniotic bands. Sometimes what happens is a part of the amnion will be torn and it will encircle uh, the digits, the limbs, etc. And that will result in amputations or ring constrictions. You can see the ring constrictions and you can see a part of the uh, big toe is already uh, amputated off by the uh, rings, I mean, uh, the amniotic bands. You can see the rings, ring constrictions in the limb as well due to the amniotic band. So this is roughly about the placenta and amnion, uh, the umbilical cord in a nutshell. For detailed versions, please do watch my channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching.